Right, welcome. Welcome to the full council meeting, 25th of November. Uh, with the market chat settled down, we can continue. Council blessing. Council Enford. Mue. So, Aro Aro, Epono and Amato, Kakaha Tonu, Kitifakapo, Mahara, who are Pai Munga, Hapori, and Mahine Mato, Mikaho Kimato, Kato, Kia, Faihua, Kia, Tortika, Ta, Mato, Mahi, uh, Mate Maya, Titiro Fakamu, Metehiri Kataya, Te Arahi, Iroto, Itikotahi Sanga, Meti Aroha. Thank you. Um, apologies. We've got Rob McCann online and James Westbury online. Any apologies? Hope. Declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda. None was told me. Um, before we go to the hearing of submissions, which will be online, um, Deputy Mayor Holbrook. Yes, today, uh, saw, uh, this week, saw the passing of. Uh, Carol Rehana, who was Kuia of Ngāti Homia. She, for many years, was the Ngāti Homia Ngāti Tua representative on Te Whakameninga, as well as grants committees and a strong and vocal advocate for her hapu and her iwi and Māori in general around this council table. Her contribution to the local community in Paikakariki was also significant. She started the Anzac Day Committee along with others and instigated ceremonies there. She was also on the Paikakariki Community Trust. And even when her health was failing her, she worked until she couldn't anymore for this council. So I would just like, if with your leave, Mr Mayor, to yes. have a moment silence for Via Carol. We'll have a minute silence from now. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, we all knew her as everybody's grandmother. Item number five, hearing of submissions and traffic bylaw. We've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they're on, online. Eileen Blake, or Ellen, Ellen Blake. Are you there? Yes, kia ora. Kia ora, Alan. You've got three minutes and then you'll have a uh, couple of minutes for potential questions. Great. Uh, kia ora, Koto, uh, Koelan Blake, uh, called Kotoi Tui, a Whanganui Ataraki, a Living Streets Aotearoa. So I'm the Wellington coordinator for. Living Streets Aotearoa, the pedestrian advocacy group. And the reason we're interested in traffic bylaws is because they are a really important part of create, um, making sure that we can enforce a livable community. Um, and particularly Living Streets has um, had a campaign running for some time about um, no foot, footpath parking, please. And we've got, um, I'm not sure if you can see that, our, our yellow, yellow feet, or wherever they are. Anyway, yellow feet. Um, which we put on uh, people's um, windscreens and it says, please don't park on the footpath that puts others at risk. 
You could be towed or fined. Children could get hit if forced onto the road. Wheelchairs and pushchairs can't get past. And vision impaired people could injure themselves. So we think that um, the the work you're doing on this traffic bylaw is really important and it's good to get it right. Um, so we support most of the recommendations that you've um, made, particularly for um, being able to create resident parking schemes and other things so that we can use that um, public road space most effectively in the way that um, local people want to, to see happen. Um, I guess one of our main comments would be just please use common definitions of things. So use the Land Transport Act um, definitions for pedestrian and footpath. Um, we support um, a, possibly a better definition for e-scooters. It's a micro mobility. Um, there are a increasing concern to us on footpaths, um, and it's important that your bylaw make sure that it can cover all all the new um, kinds of mi mobility that are coming along. So we'd suggest that maybe using a bit of uh, saying micro mobility in the e-scooter definition would help too. Um, Ellen, you've got about um, half a minute to uh, sum up. Okay. Yeah, so so we, we're supporting what you're doing here. We're really keen to make sure that um, the bylaw doesn't support any parking on footpaths at all. Um, and that's really important for um, everybody in the community that that happens. That's pretty much what I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just hang in there. Any questions? Councillor Randall. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is, what's your view on burns? Because at Waikanae Beach, and Ramati South, many of the streets don't have footpaths. And I, 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 I'm strongly of the view they should be, but they don't. So what's your view if cars wish to park on burns? Do you have any objection to that? Um, well, I, th I think there's, there's quite a lot of debate about burns. I know Auckland has a lot of um, issues with people parking on burns. Uh, my interpretation of the road rules would be to say that you, you're not allowed to park on burns either and that people should be parking on their private property if they want to. Because that, if there's no footpath, then that's the only place that people can walk. I think it's really important that children can walk off the road and not have to dodge around cars, um, either driving along booms or being parked on them. So um, if you can't have a footpath, then you need to have a clear boom, so no parking on the booms. Councillor Bravanov. Right, um, any other questions? No other questions. Eileen, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Bye. Now the next um, submit is Richard Young. Richard, you there? I am here, yes. Slightly earlier than I'm expecting, but I am yes. here. You've got um, three minutes, and after which you can stay behind for some questions. Okay. Let me just, um, let me just start here. Okay, I was told I was able to share some images. Perhaps you just um, enable my sharing from your end, please. You should be enabled. Host disabled screen sharing. Try once more. Okay, I'll just go from there. Uh, I've got three minutes um, to talk about um, parking on uh, road reserves. Uh, just so everyone is is understanding the road reserve uh, and the, the berm. The berm is the area between the edge of the, the road and the footpath and the berm and the edge of the road reserve. Um, I'm just want a, a submission on um, parking on berms. The, the current uh, bylaw basically says that um, you are permitted to park light vehicles on berms, providing they're not doing damage, and, and there's a list there under 6.3. But the change is is quite fundamental. It reverses that, and it actually prohibits any parking on the berms um, without written authorization. Now, this change um, was not, I don't believe, has been properly consulted on. Um, firstly, the consultation material incorrectly says there's currently a fine for parking on the berms, which actually doesn't appear to be correct. And also the consultation states that any changes are really minor just to improve the clarity. And again, that is not correct. It's quite a fundamental change. Um, so I'd just like to stop the sharing there and you can see my ugly mug. Um, so the proposed change to the bylaw 
is material and significant. The, the words in the public consultation are misleading. And to introduce such a, um, a change to the bylaws when the consultation process says that they were going to be minor and for clarity, uh, I believe exposes the, the council to potential of judicial review of any change bylaws. If a bylaw is changed, it obviously needs to be applied transparently and consistency, consistently. In recent 12 months, there's been something like 181 complaints about parking on berms and footpaths. The majority relate to footpaths, not berms. However, council offices were not able to provide the information on how many related to berm parking or actually any enforcement action taken on these. So there was no centralised records available. As the council officers couldn't quantify the issue of berm parking, there does not appear to be an evidential base for the proposed uh, changes to the bylaws. Um, and at this point, I would just like to, to put up my final slide here. So keep it um, short. So to conclude on berm parking, the proposed changes uh, do not appear to be evidentially based. Um, they have not been accurately or properly notified and consulted on. Anybody that does need to park on, on a berm would have to apply for written consent. Obviously, that would generate a significantly high workload for council officers and potential cost to ratepayers. More importantly, the removal of the rules around uh, what is allowed and what isn't allowed means that any decision uh, could be arbitrary and lack consistency. Uh, and that obviously opens up the council officers and the council to be challenged, again, with more time and cost to ratepayers. So my submission is that the proposed change in the bylaws is poorly thought out and should be removed and the existing one retained. That concludes my short presentation on the changes to the proposed bylaws. Thank you very much. Um, questions, Councillor Randall. Yeah, my question relates to um, berms um, where there are no footpaths. So why can I beach on thinking of Real Matty South in particular? And those roads are quite narrow. So what is your view there of, you know, if a car's actually park on the road and not on the berm, um, the, the road itself is quite narrow and they have difficulty in passing each other. Uh, OK, you mentioned footpaths. I'm not sure. Perhaps just refer Are you suggesting that you, you're supporting that this bylaw shouldn't be changed? No, I can't hear you, sorry. Okay, sorry. My question is, and particularly in Waikanae Beach and Rao Mati South, many streets have no footpaths. So, um, so cars park on the berms there for a number of reasons. Um, because if they parked on the road, they, it would be difficult for other cars to pass because the streets itself are quite narrow. What's your view on that? Look, I absolutely agree. Look, I've had an incident of that. Um, and when council looked at it, they agreed that parking on the berm was safe. It did cause a nuisance to the general public, wasn't causing damage, and therefore parking on the berm was appropriate in that respect. The change of the bylaws would make all parking on berms unlawful under the bylaws, and everyone would have to apply for written consent. I just don't think it's, it's been thought through, and I don't think it's realistic. Um, so I, I agree with you. I think the current bylaw is actually fit for purpose, and the change uh, is certainly not minor. And as I say, don't believe it's been properly consulted. It's been uh, misinformed um, and the material that's been, been circulated. Uh, and I think it's actually pretty poorly written as well. Councillor Holbrook. Can't hear anything. Sorry. Hold on. Apologies for the delay there, Richard. I just had to wait for okay. my microphone to be activated. She's from Pakagriki, so this is. It's a long way, isn't I'm, it? From I'm, I'm running on Pakagriki time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so we, when we've asked about this dur during some of the workshops, we've been assured that the, there is flexibility in terms of the enforcement of the new bylaw. So if the vehicle, in fact, wasn't causing a nuisance or obstructing traffic, then it would be unlikely that there would be enforcement upon that, um, on that party. So would you have any comment around that? 
Uh, well, why change something that isn't broken? The, the existing bylaw um, is very clear, and it gives the the guidance and, and what would constitute um, acceptable and unacceptable. The proposed bylaw removes all of that. It leaves it totally down to the discretion. There's, there's no guidance given. Um, so it could be uh, somebody phoning up and, and making a lot of complaints uh, and the and council officer says okay then we'll tell them tell that person to move um it there's no consistency and it could result in an arbitrary decision and obviously arbitrary decisions could be challenged um which yeah, really makes a, a, a mockery of the change when there's already a perfectly good bylaw in place um that, that covers this thanks richard thanks for your submission council goods Morena, richard thank you for your um considered um uh, thoughts this morning. Obviously, you put a bit of time into it, and they're not just sort of flippant views. Um, my question was along similar lines as Councilor kind of Holbrook, and I'll just elaborate a little bit further. So, um, understanding, not putting aside your earlier concerns around the misleading, your comments around the paper being misleading, and, and so forth, with regards to the berms itself, as um, Councilor Holbrook has said. Uh, not just our council, but many councils and government agencies have rules and bylaws in place that are there if they're needed. So for example, we have signage ones that there'll be many signs around the district that breach those rules um, where we may not necessarily enforce all of them until there is a complaint. From what I heard you say earlier, I, would you not support the current one because you don't believe it provides the flexibility? Um, or if there was a slight amendment which made it very clear that it was up to officer discretion, would that give you some more comfort? Because as Councillor Holber has said, certainly the feedback we had from staff was that it was trying to make it clearer, but still allowed for that flexibility. Um, there is definitely an understanding that there are occasions where people uh, will need to park on berms, but there are also instances where there might be, say, council services underneath the berms where it wouldn't be appropriate. So the, 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 those scenarios are actually fully covered in the existing bylaws, um, and, and the removal of the, the very clear um, rules on the existing bylaws and leaving a void, um, it, it just leaves it open to to an arbitrary decision, uh, which you know, would not appear to be good practice. Um, and similarly, when the fact there's no evidence, you know, the, the when I put a, a, an OIA in. Council couldn't tell me uh, of any enforcement uh, over the last 12 months on, on, on any of these matters. So any good change in bylaws should be evidence-based, and there just didn't appear to be any evidence to support this other than somebody saying, well, let's just... Well, I think the word was clarify. Now, clarify is to make clearer, and obviously what's being proposed is a complete reversal from the permitted use to the authorised use only. Um, and, and, yeah, that, that really just opens it up to... Um, the, the fact that any change, anybody that doesn't like it or anyone, any council officer can do it. And similarly, everybody that has currently parking on, on berms, of which you know, we know there are hundreds if not thousands of vehicles in, in the in the Rohi, they will now have to apply for written permission to council. Now, is that once a year? Is that one off? Is that every vehicle? It, it's The bylaw is very poorly written uh, in that respect and I think is it, it fails in in, the, in its key requirement to, to make life simpler, clearer, and more efficient for for residents of of the council. Thanks for your response, Richard. Councillor Bravano. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, um, Richard, very much for coming along and presenting to us today. So, <clears throat> I just want to read out um, what is in the draft. Seven point three says no person shall park a vehicle on a road margin, including a grass berm, verge, curb, grass garden or reserves without the prime permission of the an authorised officer, which you've covered today. There is also um, a change to 7.3, which says any person who parks a motor vehicle on any road or road margin that obstructs traffic flow, presents a risk, causes a nuisance to the general public, etc., etc., um, must remove their vehicle. Now, as has already been mentioned here, there are a number of roads in the district that basically are very narrow. And if someone parks on the edge of the road, that is going to obstruct traffic. So the roads are not wide enough. So what I'm, um, so to me, it doesn't seem practical in many um, situations to actually enforce um, or, or basically have such a bylaw in place because if people are actually following the rules, they can't actually do it. There's no way they can actually follow the rules. Unless they park up a driveway, and that is not always practical. 
So I'm just thinking that, um, and also to signage um, has not yeah, been mentioned uh, in this as well. So can you uh, make a comment on that, please? No, okay, you, you re that's the question. Do you want me to reply? Yes, yes please. please. Okay. Um, I, I think you're, you're actually agreeing with what I've just said. Um, I am, yes. The, the the existing bylaw actually is pretty well pretty well drafted, uh, and it covers those eventualities. And if it's if it is unsafe, uh, yeah. And, and in my case, council wrote back and I said, look, I'm parking on the verge because on on the berm because to park on the road it will cause an obstruction and it makes it dangerous for cars exiting the other driveways. And they wrote back and said, yeah, that's fine. It's it, it's um it's not a safety hazard. Um and and from that perspective, they they couldn't find a reason not to park there. So the approach is is a reactive approach under the existing bylaw, um, and that seems appropriate to put a blanket ban across the whole um, district, uh, with everyone have to apply for written permission. To be honest, isn't workable. Um, I don't believe is workable, and is probably going to fall into disrepute and disrepair, which I don't think is the purpose of having a bylaw if you don't intend to to apply it. So the current bylaw can be applied very effectively. The new bylaw, um, you're going to have to employ a lot more people to 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 address all the written applications for people that believe that they should be parking on the berms. And I just clarify this: this is to do with berm parking, not footpath parking, which is prohibited yes. under the existing bylaws. Similar if a berm is effectively a footpath, you're not allowed to park there either. So this is a, a, quite a specific requirement where it would apply to, to berms that aren't really accessible as footpaths um, and uh, it could be used uh, safely and, and logically for, for moving vehicles off a road. Councillor Holiday. Thank you through you, Mr Chair. Look, thank you for a very informative uh, submission. Richard, I was just wanting to ask if you could send through your notes. would be much appreciated. I can certainly do that. I'll send them to Suzanne. Yes, that would be great. You can forward them on. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr Young, for taking the time to make a very considered submission. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Right. Um, the next summit is Jeff Ward. He's not in. Ms. Mr. Quinn, nobody waiting? Oh, nobody's in the lobby. I suppose they've timed themselves. Councillor Spires. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong. Former, oh, no. former Councillor Spires. <laughs> For, former Councillor Point of Order. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you for the time this morning. This is from the, um, the Paraparamu Ramada Community Board supports parking of heavy vehicles in residential areas and would be concerned if a person was denied a permit if this person's livelihood depended on the use of the said heavy vehicle. <coughs> the traffic bylaw talks about obstruction of traffic flow. This is already happening along many residential roads, Waramu Street, Moana Road, Grey Ave at school times, to name a couple. We cannot see how the traffic bylaw is going to work with the narrowing of roads, intensification rules around building of houses without the need for any car parks. How is council going to manage? I contend this is not achievable. We can, you cannot have it both ways with the intensification of housing and no car parks, probably no driveways and parking on, on, on road berms. It's, it's going to happen. Um, I was going to say, oh, I've already spoken to them. We have um, a lot of traffic park now in Waramu Street, so I got hold of the Wellington Free Ambulance to see if it was obstructing their um, emergency services, but at the moment they're OK. 7.6, except with the written permission of the council and in compliance with any conditions subject to which that permission is given, no person shall park or abandon any motorhome caravan boat an operative or unregistered motor vehicle or trailer on any road, road margin, road margin or any other land under council control for a period not ex exceeding seven days or a period less than seven days. Council has now a responsibility for the well-being of residents and I would contend that well-being needs to be incorporated into all bylaws that council puts in place. Therefore, it is recommended that permits, when granted, are at no cost. We have people struggling to survive, pay mortgage, rent rates, etc. If their vehicle breaks down, it can take weeks or even months to save up for repairs for a vehicle to get it back on the road. 
This causes extreme stress and anxiety on already struggling families without added costs to count from council to park your car on the side of the road. Um, what I was going to say. While parking on the road, road margin on, 7.9. While parking, while parked on a road, road margin or any other land in the council control, it must not obstruct or hinder traffic flow and or obstruct other road users' view. This should be deleted as a, for the reasons as a, that I have just said. And I suppose the point I'm trying to make is we've got all this new urban development intensification. People now cannot park on their properties and nor some properties have driveways. So to say, give them seven days to do that, I think is unreasonable. And if a permit is going to be given so they can park on the road, it should be at no cost. I think that's all I had to say. Right. Okay. I'm sure um, former councillor Spies is going to be facing some robust questions. Looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, there's none. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next submitter. Have we got somebody in the lobby? No. Your Worship? Yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt. Um, Trevor Daniels had made comment. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that you're at least aware I'm, of it. I'm aware of it, Thank but you. because he was outside the time frame, you will get him to speak in public speaking time. And so we wait. So Jeff Ward is still not here. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware of him.
Good morning, Mr. Ward. Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Sorry, I'll just get myself set up. No, no, right. Um, in the meantime, can we be ready? let me know when he's ready? Yeah, good. Are you good to go? Thank you, um, Mr. Jeff Ward. You've got three minutes to deliver your submission, and then there'll be time for questions from some of the councillors. You're ready to go now? Sure. Um, mine should be quite simple. It was actually just about Omahi Street. It was a while ago that I read this and wrote in, and sorry, I've been busy, but it was mainly around the parking, and there were two things that were of interest in there. One was to do with... Um, I think it said something along the lines that if you had heavy heavy vehicles that they had to have permission to park on the street. And so this is, I'm dealing with Omahi Street, why can I, that's it, purely that one street. And the other one was something about parking on the um, the curb, i.e. not parking, you know, creating one's own personal parks. Um, and the points that I wanted to raise was purely for that street that street has issues anyway it gets used it's it's a skinny street lots of businesses there's lots of cars um it's dangerous because it gets used for um sorry i um, lost words it um it's a, it's a thoroughfare and so you know there's I, I watch it when i'm there once a week and it's dangerous there's not enough parks anyway and then if people start ticketing people that are parking on curbs you know, it's just going to become a bit of a problem. And then with the trucks, the point with the trucks is that at after, it's, I call that street Lego Land. At eight o'clock in the morning, it fills up, and at five o'clock, it's dead. There's a motel on the street, a Ricky Motel, and at night, trucks come in and they park in the street, and they stay at the motel. And I think that if you're going to start ticketing the trucks or expecting them to get permission, it's going to have a negative impact on the motel, which I don't think is good. Um, because you know they're spending money in the community, and um, the the car park one is basically that you've got mechanics in the street and lots of other service businesses, and you know they're servicing the people of Waikanae, and you know if you take if if we penalise them for the parking or we don't deal with the parking or create parking where those people go to get their vehicle serviced, you know, do we expect them to go to OTAC or Papram or, you know, what are, what's the long-term thinking with it? And so those were my two um, concerns. I could bring up a third one, but it's probably not the right area. Right, so you, um, is that, why can I in the background? Um, this is Petoni Beach. <laughs> Right, no, on that no. note, uh, no. Councillor Coots. <laughs> your answer just discredited all your feedback on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whether we can trust you or not. Um, <laughs> look, thank you, Jeff, for participating this morning um, and well aware of the area that you've raised there. Um, we've had a number of um, people raise concerns around the provisions around berms um, and raise the point that you have a raised narrow streets. Um, because of the varying nature of our streets and footpaths, the widths and that right across the district, would you accept um, that it would be practical to have a bylaw that allows flexibility for staff to provide enforcement where applicable? Um, so for example, in the very area you talk about that they use that approach that, you know, there's nowhere else to park, but in another area where there might be council services under that berm that can be damaged, that they can then use that bylaw to um, stop vehicles from parking in that place. So it, it gives flexibility. Um, is that something that you would support or you think it's just flawed altogether? Um, I mean, absolutely. The, the point I guess I'm trying to make is that, and it might not be bylaw planning, it's not my area, is that um, there needs to be some planning um, around parking and the nature of probably that street because in Waikanae I, there's, there's two streets of for commercial property and that street there's got a problem with parking and it, it needs it needs to be revisited you know like you could there's lots of things that, sh that could be done and should be done and there should be some planning for it um, but yeah certainly outside of that street you don't want people parking on berms damaging property and things like that Okay so to, so to be short if the bylaw provided flexibility to uh, still allow people to park there if it isn't causing a, a concern, then you would support that? 
I mean, that's a short-term measure. I guess the risk you run is that if you subcontract out your parking enforcement, um, you know, if you subcontract that to anybody, they're going to look to increase market share and revenue and things like that. Uh, you know, uh, how do you do it? I don't know how you do it. It's no. not really my my issue. But I think that street there needs some sort of re- review and planning. But I guess that's a separate subject. Thanks. Appreciate your response. Councillor Holiday. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Hi, Jeff. Um, look, just a couple of pretty simple questions, actually. Um, just clarifying, you don't you don't see any issue with uh, large trucks parking um, on that street during the day at all? It's just mainly just trucks. The big trucks just parked there in the evening, other than loading or unloading, as such. Um, it's quite a it's quite a good street, and it, you know, like we're talking about a little community. People aren't parking trucks there during the day. I've got a big truck. Um, I don't park it on the street. Um, it's not a problem. Cool. Um, if it was a problem, I'd like to think the street would deal with it. Yep. But, uh, you know, like I guess that is that is potentially a problem. How do you deal with it? I don't know. Not my job. What I'm trying to... My, all my point is is that at night, trucks park there, it's good, and it supports the business. If, if, if you remove it, that's a bad thing. So that, you know, how you deal with it, we're not going to resolve in three minutes. So, Jeff, just potentially, if um, and this is just a potential solution um, that we could talk with more like talk through um, when we're um, uh, working on this. Um, but if there was signage put up there that allowed for truck parking there, say after five pm or say between the hours of five pm and eight am, sort of thing, do you think that way? Oh, that's perfect. That clarity. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. There, there, there's a there's a way to make it work. Um, Lovely. That's right. Okay. No, thank you very much. Thank you, um, Jeff. Doesn't seem to be any more questions, and uh, please enjoy Petoni. Can I ask one thing? Oh yes, please. And it's probably not for this forum, but I don't know who who needs to do it. But um, just um, seems we're early. The <laughs> there's a lot of young children that ride scooters. You know, they're like little fifty cc motorbikes to school. There's no secondary school in Waikanae, so obviously they're going down to Kapiti or PC or um, it's not safe for them to ride on the expressway. It's not safe to them to ride on the 80k zone area because the bikes don't do 80k. Um, and then they get grief taking their bikes over the Otai Hangar Bridge. Um, if you're looking at planning and things like that, I think there needs to be some consideration for that. Right. Unless, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you for taking the time, Jeff. Thank you. See ya. Have a good day. Thank you. Um, is Quinton Pool? Yeah, I'm here. Quinton, you there? Yes, I am. You've got three minutes, and then after that, time for questions. Radio. Um, thank you very much, councillors. Um, just going through this, um, it's pretty obvious. Um, it needs to be a bit more thought um, because there's going to be a few un- unintended consequences if it goes through as is on the three issues I've picked up on. Um, within this um, the first one was um, do you s- support the bylaw amendments to set up residents of par- business parking zones um, it's going to ke- create a series of problems for the residents and also the visitors to the district as it's all encompassing to the region we will not be publicly signposted and Thirdly, to that, it will create specific problems to communities within Kapiti. And the first one um, I'm going to bring up is the Waikanae Old Beach. Um, in the 90s, um, Mayor Ambler t- attempted to uh, put curbing and footpathing into the what is known as the Old Beach area of Waikanae. A court case occurred and council had to strip out. They were allowed to leave, leave um, a bit on Hepperi Street, but they had to strip out everything out of Hona Street that they'd started on and reinstate. Now, I don't want council to go down that track again and you know create angst and wasting money. Um, and this bylaw, uh, by its incumbencing nature, will do that. Um, the other problem we've got is the width of roads. Um, when you've got a, 
an average width of a road of 4.2 to 4.8 metres, you've got nowhere to park. Or if you do park on the road, as is envisaged by this uh, change in, to the bylaw, the road will be blocked. And we've seen this in Wellington um, and the fury created. So your options are yellow line all of Old Waikanae and stop parking anywhere uh, on the road or on the road reserve or you start creatively thinking how to resolve the issue. Now you have the same problem out in the rural districts. Um, the rural districts actually Quentin, are the part, you've got half a part minute that's in New Zealand. Summer. You've got half a minute of summer. Right. Well, so basically you've got unintended consequences from the th three things that I've brought through um, on my submission. Um, there is no economic rationale for some of these changes, and I think they should be actually tested to make sure they're worthwhile before um, they are put in place. Um, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be put in place, but I, sh I think they should be uh, tested. The other thing is that uh, stopping parking in uh, in residential things is a very nice thing, but it is going to create costs to the primary sector um, in a big way. And all you're doing is reducing the ability of New Zealand to pay for itself. We can't rely on social welfare all the time. Right. So that's what I've got to say quickly. Okay. Um, questions? Councillor Provano. Thank you. <clears> Through <throat> you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Paul, for coming along or speaking um, to your submission today. So, um, I hear what you're saying. Do you agree or do you think that the, the, the bylaw, as it currently stands, um, is a good way to go forward? Or... Yeah. I... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um... Just another, I think it does, um, you know, it's got good points, but I, what I've also suggested in my submission is ways to improve it um, because it's all encompassing and the, the trouble is it's going to um, create problems down the track for um, the, reg the poor people trying to uh, operate under it, whether it's the council staff trying to enforce it or the uh, residents and the people coming into the district. So maybe I should clarify my question. It's actually that the current the, the current light bylaw as it st as it stands, rather than the proposed bylaw. Sorry, Justin, I did not go back to the old bylaw at all. I just looked at what we what was being proposed, um, and I just looked at that. Um, I thought it was more important to deal with the here and now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Paul. There's no more questions. Thank you for taking the time to present your submission. Right, yeah, thanks. Right, we've got Pat, D Pat Dugan. He's got two submissions. The first on behalf of the Waikanae Beach Residents Society. And then the next one is his own individual one. Pat, you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, you've got three uh, minutes on... Um, I'll start my video. Um, I'm you've got three minutes on, on this one. The hang, on, hang on, Pat. You've got three minutes on your first one, and then after that you've got questions. So away you go. Thank you. I'm speaking mainly on behalf of the Waikanae um, Beach Residents Society. Thank you. Um, I've listened to the earlier submissions and would associate us with Richard Young and Quentin Poole's submissions, Quentin being a member of our committee. Um, I won't therefore dwell too much on though that topic, but quickly will say that in regard to the berm issue in Wakenai Beach, there clearly is a problem which has been identified. I'd like to put in front of you the possibility of two amendments, one being that the uh, prohibition on berms not apply where there is no curbing so that would open it up uh, secondly that you consider whether to allow uh, the residents to permit themselves parking outside their residence 
this would resolve um, quite a lot of issues without requiring uh, written authorizations from the council. More generally, I put it to you that the concern about uh, this rather uh, extensive rewrite of the traffic bylaw is that it is one size fits all in many respects. It's a bit like the government's bill, I must say, about uh, the medium density residential standard and the criticism is very similar. Uh, I suggest that it would be much more acceptable to the community if this, if the council by resolution or in some other way uh, created a situation where this bill, this uh, bylaw came into operation only after there had been a resolution by area in which the council members, yourselves, would be presented by staff with um, how they had considered for specific areas the issues and that the bylaw, rather than you passing it, half a minute to sum up. coming into effect, it came into effect over uh, that through that process. This applies to all of the matters. The other aspect is simply uh, that we have suggested uh, that the uh, introduction of the heavy motor vehicle and the bus lanes, etc., should be subject to uh, a economic evaluation of some sort or other. I note that um, Clause 5.5 says that all resolutions will be published at least four weeks beforehand, and so this would really be that they be accompanied by at least a reasonable explanation of uh, why uh, that resolution has been passed. If you adopted my view that you introduce the bylaw by a set of uh, area-wide, well, specific area considerations, then uh, you, I think that would be something far more acceptable to the community. Right, thank you. Um, any questions? Councillor Randall. Yeah, um, thank you, Pat, for your submissions. <coughs> but Bernard Randall here. Yes, you remember? Bernard. Um, yes, Bernard. Yeah, so Jared's submissions, um, he made a proposed amendment about um, parking on Burns, and I presume yes. he has discussed this with you, and you probably agree with it. But, I do. Yeah. Um, I have, am suggesting that we it, it be dealt with uh, on the one hand by that um, amendment which is it, it, um, uh, that it, it, the uh, clause 7.3 applies where there exists curb and channeling and formed footpaths um, the um, my other thought of permitting um, residents to decide would be uh, a kind of a different way of, uh, of addressing the same issue uh, Richard Young and others in Quentin have explained that uh, if you literally said you can't park on berms in the Oldie Beach area, there'd be streets that you couldn't get through. For example, uh, Tai Ta Street. Right. Um, Councillor Brabano. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Pat, for coming along to speak today. So, um, primarily you've talked about Waikanae Beach. Um, in your submission, you also mentioned a rural environment. So, um, what you're suggesting in the, um, in the more residential um, areas, are you also suggesting in terms of the, um, of the rural environments as well, in terms of um, a, a suitable place to park? Well, I think um, in regard to the rural area, um, it kind of is logically the case that um, if there's no uh, curb and, and channeling and no formed uh, footpath that um, people will be parking kind of on something that is indefinite it becomes part of the berm um, so that in, in that area um, 
the bylaw is unlikely to be observed, um, again, my suggestion would be that uh, the council instruct the staff that they uh, uh, want to introduce these uh, this by area, and that rather than going as the as the um, by law draft uh, proposes that you bring it into operation it hasn't been in operation at all but you bring it into operation overnight and then you get authorised or people seek authorizations for exemption from it I'm essentially proposing the other way round that you look at it or staff do area by area issue the um, exemptions in effect and then bring it into operation. So you're saying that that would, that would work far better than having, for example, people parking on the side of the road, on the road, along Pika Pika Road, for example, which is basically what um, is being proposed, that they can't do that. Well, I think that bringing in overnight that you can't park in rural roads um, where you your um, tyres or one side of the car is on the berm is not going to work. I mean, it's just not going to happen. People will pull off. Uh, we have our meetings at uh, Gerald Reese's uh, house in Rutherford Drive, and uh, he, there are very wide berms which merge with the road at that point. Um, we park on them. Uh, I just can't believe that uh, we will or, or that it would make sense for us to now uh, religiously park on that road. Um, so this is why I think that bringing this bylaw into operation you know, in, in five weeks' time or whenever you uh, would, and then, uh, you know, Gerald, uh, on behalf of the uh, Waikanae Beach uh, Society or just for his own uh, thing, seeking an authorisation, is a, 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 a process that's unworkable and will just load up staff. The alternative sounds like it's more work for staff, but will in the, in the longer run be less work. And it would say that you look at Rutherford Drive, for example, and you say, well, in this area, uh, a small encro um, encroachment onto the berm is going to happen and it'll be authorised. You know, you've got to park more than you must have uh, the driver's side of your wheels on the tarmac, for example. That would be one way of uh, policing it there. Uh, I suspect that that would accommodate any concerns about council infrastructure. So, uh, yeah, you know, th there we are. That's the, I'm suggesting a phased introduction of this, looking at specific areas uh, including the Aldi Beach one, would need some special attention, and that in the long run, while that's work for the staff, it'll be less work than the deluge of authorizations or the complete uh, failure to comply with the Act, uh, with the um, bylaw um, for a long time. So thank you, Pat. So I have a further question. So I just trying to understand, I suppose, your psyche, you know, you know, when you park in Rutherford Drive. So I assume that you do park on the berm rather than the road. And is that, do you be, believe that is for a safety reason or it's because it's so many metres less to where you need to walk to? No, it's not um, less distance. It's trivial. Um, no, it is because that road is not really very wide and the berm is the berms on either side of that particular road are uh, wider in aggregate um, not not each of them but taken together they are wider than the road um, so that it's just a natural thing for one out of courtesy to drivers going down that road which is a rural road people probably go slightly faster on to park your car typically to park it so that as I say um, the driver's side wheels are on the tarmac and uh, the, the others are on the berm. That's, I think, if you went right now or on the weekend, you would see a lot of cars parked that way. So this, this needs to be done area by area 
with a bit of a look at it, or otherwise it's going to be either ignored or, um, in fact, somebody mischievously could deluge you with um, a, a, a un, unsustainable set of authorization requests, and you'd have to give blanket uh, authorizations to stop them tying up the system. So, so some of those roads also, Look, um, um, a lot I don't of cyclists use those roads, and so in terms of question. safety, is that a concern if they were parked, cars were parked on the road as well? Councillor, yes, it, yes, it definitely is. Councillor yeah. Sophie Hanford is waiting to ask a question. Councillor Hanford. <laughs> Kia ora. Um, just a, a brief question. You mentioned, and, and Mr Mayor, you can also tell me if this isn't quite the appropriate time to ask this question, but I thought it would be relevant. Um, you spoke quite a bit about various alternatives and potentially a phased approach that's centred around localities and kind of focusing in on uh, assessing different localities and solutions that might work best. But I'm keen to kind of hear your perspectives on other alternatives such as, because the alternatives that you've mentioned are really focused around still ensuring the parking of private motor vehicles, but what about you know yourself and others um, considering different ways of getting from A to B in the first place? Because provision still obviously needs to be there for public transport that's easy, easily accessible and you know people cycling and walking. So I'm just I'm interested to hear kind of what you see as being the balance between ensuring. Um, yeah, ensuring that where people are parking, the people who need to park by getting places from A to B in a motor vehicle, um, they're able to do that, but then also allowing people who um, who are keen to take up that more climate-friendly alternative can do that as well. I agree, but that is why one size fits all does not work. You know, excluding cars from the berm in the interests of allowing cyclists to cycle on the berm as I, I can understand there could be places where uh, if cars park on the berm you can cycle on it but then there are places we've got to drive once again be an example where the berms are so wide that uh, there is no problem of that type and in fact uh, for cyclists going along Rutherford Drive they are safer if the cars are on the berm because uh, otherwise the cars will be something they have to navigate around. And in that particular case, they will be spasmodic cars, if I put it that way, and that the cyclists will therefore be cycling along most of the time close to the berm and then have to move away from it. This, I think, illustrates that my what I'm saying is not a car-biased view, it is that it is not going to work as a one size fits all. And there are places where cows are better on the berm from the cyclist point of view. Um, Pat, um, am I right that you've covered both your submissions? Yes, pretty, that's uh, pretty much so. But could I just say my second uh, or my personal submission, it was the one where I have uh, would bring to the table the proposition that in the Waikanae beach area, uh, Oldie beach area, where there are no footpaths, uh, that it is uh, in the interest of a resident in many cases to be able to park uh, on or, and have visitors potentially park on their berm rather than on the road and that in that instance um, that I would suggest this uh, region, you know, area by area um, analysis and, and decisions and application of this um, bylaw would potentially lead to a, a uh, decision authorising um, the parking on the bird by um, car owners and particularly because the requirement for garages and for driveways is being removed by the medium density residential standard. And so, uh, you know, the alternative is, again, that the cars park re uh, religiously on the road, whereupon the uh, people concerned would find that a nuisance, particularly when they're riding bikes, if it happens. Right. Any questions on the second one? Councillor Provano. 
thank you through you mr mayor so um you know you're talking about private re residents and I, i'm it's just i've just thought that there are a couple of churches down there and when they have these services on a sunday there's inadequate parking and so they do park on the berms so um have you know through the resident society are you aware of any concerns that they have about um these sorts of issues because i know that there are a lot of cars that when these services are on I'm not sure whether they have submitted on them, but I, I couldn't agree more with you that um, it will not be complied with even by uh, you know, the most um, concerned and religiously um, correct citizens in that particular case. Uh, so that, that is um, a further illustration. Um, I could I just uh, share uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, just one other matter, which is that in a couple of places in the well, the, the question of public notification um, is modified, and I think five point five deals with that. But in a couple of places in the drafting, it lists a whole set of things that have to be apparently satisfied for the council to uh, relax or change a resolution. And I think that that is odd. I can't see why you would, in a bylaw, constrain your ability to change a resolution. I'm just looking now to um, find an example, but there are examples uh, where you have, uh, the council may, 19.1, uh, the council may also so grant exemption to resolutions with satisfied safety will not be compromised the, the uh, E uh, con, um, considerations I personally cannot understand why you would see it necessary to write into the bylaw a constraint on your actions It'll become a checklist for the resolution of course but it just seems that you're trying to well the effect is to, to attempt to bind your successors because presumably you would do all those things so that just seems to be a unnecessary bit of bureaucracy to have a, a constraint on your granting of exemptions right thank you very much for taking the time to submit to us pat thank you Thank you very much, and um, I'm pleased to uh, have the opportunity to introduce myself to the council. I'm, I have become treasurer of the Capital District uh, Society. I commend you on your your submission to the Select Committee on the Environment. I myself made a submission. Um, I think we're on the same side on, on that one thoroughly. Your submission, I think, carried a lot of weight, and Thank I you. would commend the authors of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that brings an end to that um, order of business five hearing of submissions. We are on to item six, public speaking time for items relating to the agenda. Now we've got Trevor Daniels. Um, is he here? Um, is he? He's not. But is um, Lynn or Martin Weil? Okay, cool. I think I'll handle um, members' business now. And and then come back to item um, seven, public speak, damn responses, not necessary. Um, leave of absence, anybody? No? Matters of an urgent nature, no? Mayor's report, zilch. And so we wait for Trevor Daniels. Yeah, I think we, we take a break, eh? What, 10 minutes? Cool. 10.15.